Okay, so welcome back. Uh, this is uh, the fourth video for week 7 and uh, we are looking at the alternatives to plastic, the greener alternatives, bio based alternatives. So, this is uh, in this video, uh, in the previous video we are focused mostly on uh, some of these uh, plastic like a greener product, they were also bio based. So, we will continue, we can say that we are continuing this similar discussion and looking at the other plastic products, what are the other alternatives out there. And then uh, uh, to I think in the next video after this, uh, we will be looking at how to even quantify, because there are a lot of green washing also happening, where people are claiming something green, but they are not really green. So, how to quantify if something is green or not, we will talk about that as well. So, so, in terms of the alternatives, uh, uh, corn, corn starch and sorghum, uh, they, they are also being used quite a bit in uh, making uh, this uh, plastic alternatives. So, maize, better known as corn, is in uh, which uh, it is uh, pro produced is annual, annual uh, pro produce, which uh, gets produced in many parts of the world, including India. It is a, a staple food, like your corn flakes and many things are made out of corn. And uh, so, again the corn or maize, uh, there is a photosynthesis like any other plant. So, it absorbs CO2 and uh, water into glucose and oxygen. So, the non required sugar uh, is, is stored in the form of starch. This corn starch is relevant uh, because it forms the raw material for the production of bioplastic. So, that is you can make uh, uh, with the corn starch you can make bioplastic. So, there is a uh, eco flow loose fill is made from corn starch and can be used the same way as a regular polystyrene loose fill. Uh, but this eco version which can also be made from sorghum which is, uh, is crop similar to uh, maize is biodegradable, uh, order free and maybe best of all is static free. So, it is a uh, it is it is easier uh, it is a uh, so these products are biodegradable they do not uh, have any kind of a smell as well and maybe best of all they are also static free. So, there are uh, these are the production steps for bioplastic products from the corn starch. The corn starch is uh, fermented into lactic acid. So, if you can look at here they are, they are forming lactic acid and by the aid of uh, lactobil. So, and this lactic acid then transformed into a long chain carbon polymers which is called polyactic acid. In the short form, you hear a lot PLA, so PLA based plastic, and uh, that is the polyactic acid uh, uh, based plastic, and this is molded into uh, so you made a polymerization. So, this then molded into small plastic pallets, and these pallets uh, are then used to produce many different objects. So, similarly, if you remember from the first video of this week or uh, uh, I think it was in the first video, maybe in the second. Um, uh, so, there again when we are trying to do those mechanical recycling, it was doing the same thing, we are making those plastic pallets. So, rather than using uh, those oil based uh, plastic uh, uh, resins, we here we are using bio based bio based polymers. So, that is the difference and since these are bio based polymers, they are mostly biodegradable. So, and they can biodegrade uh, in a traditional uh, like waste uh, management system, uh, whether it is a composting and or a big digestion. So, then you, they are used, so they are uh, small plastic pallets which is used to produce many different objects. So, in this case in uh, plastic pallets are used to produce bioplastic foil, subsequently the foil is used to produce PLA cups and bowls and uh, run through different machines shaped into objects different with the form of die cutters, impact of heat and all that. So, then P PLA cups and balls are ready for use. So, you can use uh, and that is for the green box uh, uh, that particular uh, product brand which you they use that. There are other brands out there using PLA as well. So, you will see variety of products coming out uh, from uh, polylactic acid uh, which is uh, we, uh, earlier whenever we used to call bioplastic, uh, this polyactic acid was the one which was getting the most uh, 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 is, uh, like a name, although it become like a synonyms for bioplastic. So, PLA based plastic was, was called bioplastic 
and but then since other sources came in, uh, so we kind of be we are being a bit more we, when we say PLA uh, based plastic, it is part of bioplastic of course, it is a significant portion of bioplastic, but there are other types of bioplastics as well. So, when you look at the sustainability of uh, in terms of the bioplastic stuff, uh, it is a no waste from non renewable uh, non renewable sources. So, it is mostly renewable sources which we have. So, it is a here the bioplastic is, is a renewable herbal source uh, which is uh, corn and does not contribute to the waste of non renewable sources such as petroleum. Corn is used for the starch production uh, which is not intended for human consumption. So, part of the corn which is not used in human consumption is used for that otherwise that is also a problem. See when this uh, biofuel industry came in uh, last decade uh, one of the problem that we were facing was uh, because the, uh, the food prices went up. The reason the food prices went up is many of these uh, corn and other stuff which were supposed to be uh, on our plates in different forms, they were being diverted to the bio oil production and when uh, they because they were making more money. So, when they go for the bio oil production, so amount of uh, corn goes down in the market, food prices goes up as you know demand and supply basic economics. So, since the supply demand is always more, more population, more people, affordability going up, uh, people are becoming little uh, I would say in general if you look at uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, I would say the salary level of people have gone up. Uh, uh, although there is if we talk to social scientists there are a lot of issues of disparity in the country, there are poorer are becoming poorer not only in country or also abroad like globally poorer are becoming poorer, richer are becoming richer, but uh, that those are true uh, to some extent, but at the same time uh, in general if you look at there is a upward trend of the society, the affordability for different stuff has really gone up if you uh, look at the way the market is right now. So, in that case uh, uh, if you have more demand for food and with the higher population and higher affordability, but you take the corn away from the uh, food market and put it for your uh, uh, for like a bio oil or biodiesel, uh, the food prices has to go up and that is what happened. So, food prices started going up and then the people realized that this is not the way to go. We can use bio based waste material. So, we can use the bio waste uh, bio, bio, biodegradable waste or uh, organic waste any food agricultural waste and use that as a source for making these alternative products, but anything which is uh, grown for the sake of consumption which we are used to consuming especially the staple food like uh, maize or, uh, or uh, whether we uh, this this should not go into alternative products because then it becomes a problem uh, for the food industry. So, uh, it is not uh, it is uh, it is not intended for human consumption. Uh, uh, it is only 0.05 percent of the global starch production is used for the manufacturing of bioplastic. Uh, therefore, the cultivation has no impact on the food supply on human and animals. So, that is uh, uh, so special characteristics for this is a high stability uh, free from BPA bisphenol A if you remember that uh, from last uh, week videos. It consists of 100 percent renewable like 100 percent raw 100 percent natural raw material. It is biodegradable as per the European Union, it meets the, that uh, criteria, thermoplasticity and therefore molded into any object. So, you can put it in uh, uh, whatever shape and size you want and that becomes uh, uh, that becomes uh, like you can put in more can you can make more different types of products out of that. So, then another uh, uh, things are coming up, uh, there is one company which has come up with a eatable six pack ring. So, this is an you can eat that. So, brewery has created edible six pack rings that are safe for animals uh, to eat. Uh, this is salt water brewery, uh, this, is, uh, the, this is a six pack holder. So, you have six packs together. So, they can be uh, they can be used for different applications for different this cans are used for uh, soda, cans are being used for beer like even for uh, beer and other stuff cans are and there are a variety of soda even the lemon uh, this is uh, uh, nasty uh, different types of drinks uh, the, these cans are used. And so, six cans together usually are put into a six pack ring and uh, that becomes kind of you can buy six together and this is how you see them in a in a uh, superstore. So, when you put the usually these used to be of made out of plastic 
and of course, these are uh, your uh, metal stuff aluminum most of the time, but these are uh, your plastic material which used to create problem in the ocean and, uh, because, and this plastics will break down and then it becomes a uh, uh, like a microplastics and then fish used to eat that. So, so if it is a eatable, uh, if it is a biodegradable and eatable, uh, so it is uh, it's easily coming from barley and wheat. Uh, that is what it is being used and uh, it is a from the byproduct from the waste product uh, of uh, coming uh, uh, from uh, brewery industry. So, these are left over from the brewery process. So, if the if, so even in this case if this ring and rather if not it is not a plastic ring, but it is uh, it is the uh, uh, like a biodegradable ring. So, or eatable ring. So, when it goes to ocean even if it when it ends up in the ocean it will it is eatable. So, uh, animals can eat it and it will degrade, it will not take the time that plastic takes uh, to really uh, plastic stays in, uh, in the marine environment for a very, very long time. So, uh, so the design is uh, just as strong as the plastic packaging. So, that is also very important, it should do the function. Uh, it is a bit more expensive to produce. So, that is that is what I was trying to tell you in the, in the last video that uh, uh, these kind of industries need some sort of support in the beginning. Uh, just to get into the market, they start selling a good good numbers of their products and uh, mature a little bit so that uh, they become price competitive. Any product when it comes for the first time, it's costly, but once it's uh, st uh, it volume starts and then the prices goes down. So that's uh, uh, so that is uh, it's a it's it's needed for that. Uh, Moreover, however, it hopes customer will be willing to pay a bit more in order to help the environment. So that's. Uh, uh, that is what the company is hoping. So, it is it usually if it is not too much, it is uh, there are there is a market out there now. People want to buy green products. There is always there is some sort of uh, I would say section of uh, uh, population is already looking at uh, they are ready to pay say 10 percent, 15 percent more on any product to buy something greener, but it has to be greener first of all and that there should be a uh, checks and balance on that. It should not be green washing. Green washing is when the companies claim something is green, but when you do the real investigation you found that actually it is not green. So, that should not happen and at the same time it should be uh, uh, like uh, it should not be too costly because uh, of every every uh, like even every family's budget is also limited. So, if it is too costly then it becomes difficult right? like people can uh, spend a little bit extra maybe 10 to 15 percent extra maximum uh, to buy something greener. I am talking about in general, there will be some crazy people who will cook and pay maybe twice the money uh, to get it. Uh, I should not call them crazy, but they are somehow environmental friendly people who will uh, who can do that, but uh, they are in general middle class, lower middle class, upper middle class, their their budgets are always limited. So, it is, um, uh, so that is, but uh, if it even, uh, so, but these products are useful and uh, when they end up in the ocean. It starts uh, the what, what has been found that in a matter of hours it starts breaking down, which also address the issue of animals getting stuck in them. So, animals uh, that is some we saw that we some of the videos last uh, uh, week where uh, that animals were uh, they were like the plastic rings and uh, even the, in one of those uh, uh, their uh, if I remember correct that uh, uh, straw got into the nose nostrils of uh, one of the turtle. And then the turtle was uh, has lot of wires like plastic wires all around him even if its neck was covered with those plastic wire and we saw all that and it is really sad uh, because uh, we are destroying their habitat uh, with all these uh, waste getting in there. But uh, so, these kind of product uh, even if it ends up in ocean. Of course, if the goal should be that it none of these plastic should end up in ocean. Uh, if we have a proper plastic waste management program, it will not. And that is the again uh, we, we are uh, talking about lots of uh, plastic products, alternatives to plastic products, but the course is the title of the course is plastic waste management and we should not lose that focus. Uh, that uh, it is plastic is not a problem, it is the plastic waste which is a problem. So, once we dispose that plastic, uh, whether it is a uh, regular plastic, uh, the petroleum based plastic or even the plastic that we are proposing like all these examples that you are seeing in this video in this particular week and uh, different videos, they also needs a proper plastic waste management. 
yes the managing those plastic will be slightly easier now because they are degradable to most part. So, I can use it in my composter, I can use it in my anaerobic digestion when I say I like as a city level as a ULB level we can manage it, but these will also produce if biodegradable means they will produce CO2 they will produce methane and the CO2 and methane if not captured or if it is not uh, just if we just leave it to go to the atmosphere. I do not know whether we are really solving the uh, like we are only solving part of the problem because uh, uh, it was it is it is more like a problem sifting earlier it was uh, the pro that is a severe problem that plastic is especially that single use thin plastics getting uh, in a smaller pieces getting into the ocean becomes an issue, but it, but replacing it with this biodegradable plastic and then just do nothing into this biodegradable waste biodegradable plastic waste management that also is a problem by itself. So, it is uh, we are uh, just we are doing only part of the uh, solution not the complete solution. So, plastic waste management uh, having a proper plastic waste management which is will be the part of uh, uh, your ULB solid waste management because plastic waste essentially will most of the plastic waste you will see is coming from the municipal waste. So, that needs a lot of uh, focus that is why uh, this waste management uh, is uh, right now in, in a country like India uh, with all this Swachh Bharat mission program, smart cities program, we need to really focus on a good workable waste management infrastructure and that is what some, some places it is happening. So, we will see how uh, it uh, gets done in uh, many parts of the country. Uh, if there is uh, some work already kind of started and it is uh, going on. So, regard coming back to this edible six pack ring which is uh, can be eaten up and even if it goes to ocean it is not that bad. So, let us uh, in this uh, next uh, 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 slide we have a small video uh, which uh, is trying to go over the detail of these uh, six packs. So, let us look at that and it has a subtitle uh, there is no uh, we have not put any audio here. So, as you can see they are uh, made from uh, leftover from the beer uh, that uh, whatever is the leftover. So, even if it uh, they can be eaten or they will just decompose. So, even if it ends up in the ocean the animals will not be entangled in them and because uh, it is easier uh, it, it will be it will decompose uh, quite fast. Similarly, there are other bottles out there. Uh, these water bottles that decompose by itself uh, this, uh, by one of the Johnson a product design student he has uh, come up with that and when he looked at all these plastic issues as you can see uh, on that video that uh, there are several plastic going into the ocean uh, going of some of them going into the ocean, but going at the waste stream. So, more than billions plastic bottles are used in the world and it takes 1000 years for all those. So, this biodegradable bottle is made from red algae and then uh, it is made from 100 percent natural material and you can use that bottle and after you drink that water it is uh, it, it starts after you drink that uh, water it uh, it, it starts uh, melting uh, by itself. So, and then you do not have you do not uh, you do not have to really worry about that water bottle. So, it is uh, uh, it's, it's, it decomposes and uh, gets uh, used up in uh, by itself uh, like it will it will become part of uh, your uh, uh, say if you put it in a, in a composter it will compost there it will put an anaerobic digestion it will uh, it will get anaerobic digested if you do not use it anywhere it will just decompose in the atmosphere too. So, these are some of the alternatives which is uh, being used uh, and uh, it is uh, made from. So, many of these are naturally made stuff and so they are uh, uh, they are uh, coming into the market. They have they are picking up, but it's still there are there are limitations to these uh, products uh, in terms of price and uh, some other aspect in terms of its strength. As I said earlier as well many of these bioplastics still are not 100 percent bioplastic they have some traditional plastic blending just to give required strength. So, those things are being worked into in terms of research right now. So, that was uh, on uh, bio based plastics some other examples uh, there are some paper based products are also coming up which is uh, uh, use taking the space of what the single use plastic products had. And one of them was uh, high function packaging material which is the metallized paper uh, this is uh, silver board uh, metallized paper it is a special paper it has a metallic layer vacuum deposited on the surface for decorative effect. And this offers a solution to achieve distinctive metallic finish 
on packaging with only fraction of the aluminum content of traditional foil. So, and the material again remains compostable same as pa paper. So, it uh, can use for labels and packaging of beverage food and uh, they, they are uh, and consumer products by approximately 300 companies in 80 countries uh, are uh, uh, are looking at this product and earlier it was uh, many of this plastic based product was being used. So, it is replacing those plastic based product by this paper based product and which is uh, environmentally uh, friendly, more compostable and all that. So, that is uh, another area. Uh, so, in terms of these uh, metallized paper what they are this is paper is pre coated uh, uh, in uh, with uh, liquors uh, that are applied. Uh, uh, on is to smooth out the surface of the paper to act as a barrier between the paper and the metallized layer and to improve adhesion of the vaporized metal. Then uh, you, you have a holographic effect, uh, the paper is then micro embossed using a proprietary patent process to create the visual effect desired. Pre coated paper is then metallized directly, all metallized paper then top coated and re-moisturized is a final process. The coating uh, protects the aluminum foil from damage and serve as a print receptive printer and so they can print different uh, like uh, logos and other stuff. Uh, for linen uh, uh, brushed or pinhole embossed the metallic paper is mic micro embossed for the desired texture. So, there are uh, this is kind of the basic of the pr production process. We do not as a, as a waste management person we do not have to worry too much about the production process what we worry more about the what is the waste coming out of it. Uh, production we can leave it to our chemical engineering friends. Uh, but in terms of what is its key feature, uh, where it can be used and then when it comes to the environment what could it will uh, potentially problem may arise from that or what uh, can we do the resource recovery, what kind of resource recovery we can do. So, here in terms of uh, key features of this metallized paper, it is excellent printability, it prints really well, uh, it works with all printing technique uh, like offset, uh, roto rotograph. Uh, UV, flexography and some digital and also different types of ink solvent based, water based, UV curable. It can it facilitates cutting, uh, it resists uh, curling, labeling and recycling, uh, peels off with washing to ensure ease of handling by the customer. So, when you are uh, peeling it can easily be peeled off during the recycling that is really good. You do not need that glue I think uh, over there uh, that is typically there with uh, other uh, labeled material is stable quality, uh, high productivity, low cost, uh, higher biodegradability of paper over the film because we used to use lot of plastic film. So, if you can replace, replace those plastic film by this uh, it becomes easier and they already are uh, being used in 80 countries but more than 300 companies. So, this is uh, this power market is this product is already there which is replacing the film plastic uh, by this uh, metallized paper which is uh, environmentally friendly uh, than others. So, you see here some of the applications of the metallized paper. So, these are uh, uh, different labels from different companies, different products. So, these are all uh, these labels are all metallized paper. So, this is uh, from this silver board is a company name and you see that uh, uh, different applications here for uh, uh, some containers, uh, some box even for uh, different types of boxes. Uh, you can put uh, as a label for uh, drinks uh, even part of the for the tissue paper uh, container or tissue paper boxes and different applications. So, you can use these uh, uh, applications are used for metallized uh, paper which is uh, already being used for different product. And uh, there are some other uh, there is uh, uh, say wood pulp uh, cellophane is also cellophane which again uh, for uh, is uh, like a packaging uh, different uh, product. So, there is there are uh, which has lot of plastic again it, it was plastic uh, based. Now, uh, when we say plastic based means the traditional plastic based now there is a another uh, variety of it is coming out in terms of using from wood pulp. Uh, so, the company here the nature flex is uh, is the sustainability uh, the sustainable younger brother of cellophane. So, cellophane is what we have used uh, which is made from uh, uh, food certified uh, wood pulp and uh, certified biodegradable. It comes as uncoated, you can use it for chocolate, confectionery as well as household items semi permeable which can be used for fresh produce and dairy uh, and uh, barrier you can for bakery, snacks, coffee, tea, chocolate. So, you can have semi permeable as well as uh, uh, like a non permeable. 
uh, coffee, tea, chocolate, confectionery. As you can see, the pictures here, all different types of packaging can be done uh, using uh, these uh, material. So this is again, uh, it's coming from wood pulp rather than it's a plastic based. So these are uh, uh, these are the alternatives, uh, which is uh, uh, environmentally more greener alternatives. And when we are claiming, we are suggesting many things are environmentally greener. Uh, but uh, we will talk. We will also talk about uh, it's very uh, in uh, in this uh, week itself. Like how to quantify that? How to really say that something is green? Because uh, that that is important. Because uh, otherwise, how we'll know uh, how much green it is? Because whenever you come up with a newer product or newer process, yeah, and then you say that this is better than my older process or older product, we need to know how much better. How to quantify that? So that those kind of discussion we'll do. Uh, in uh, maybe in the next video. So, there are uh, some uh, scientists have made grocery bags out of shrimp shells. So, that is another uh, from the shrimp shell, uh, there is uh, in uh, researchers from Nottingham and Nile University, they have synthesized a biopolymer nanocomposite material, which can make uh, production of affordable biodegradable plastic. So, they are they have taken up, uh, they have developed the polymer, but is uh, dissolving the cheetosin flax derived from the shrimp shell. Uh, in a solution before a plastic film is deposited, uses a traditional uh, polymer processing technique. It is a degradable, antimicrobial, antibacterial, biocompatible property. So, it makes uh, uh, use a de uh, it makes it useful and uh, the researcher says that use of a degradable polymer made of pond cells for carrier bags would lead to lower carbon emissions and reduce food and packaging waste accumulating in the street or legal dump site. So, that is, uh, so you are basically you can many times we hear the term you are trying to kill two birds with one stone. So, here if you do that you are also reducing the food waste coming from this particular industry or this particular uh, stream and that is a that is a win win because a newer product is being made and at the same time we do not have to manage it as the waste in a, in a dump site or in a landfill. So, these are some of these examples of shopping bags and other uh, containers made from shrimp shells. So, as you can see uh, different types of containers, uh, cups, shopping bags, they are all coming from shrimp shells. So, which uh, is already in the market. So, once this bioplastics uh, are used up, what, what, we, what are the different uh, ways which it comes to the environment? Because uh, we are saying traditional plastic is bad. Uh, so, we let us replace it with bioplastic, greener plastic, whatever we call it environmental friendly plastic. In this environmental friendly plastic also needs their uh, disposal after its use. So, that is that is a very, very important part of it. Uh, so, there are different ways it can be uh, it can be disposed, it can go to a landfill, it can go to littering, domestic composting, industrial composting, incineration, biogas breakdown in the ground itself, it can go into our body too, you can go for recycling, different types of recycling. So, there are variety of ways it can go into the environment. So, let us uh, we will uh, we spend some more time on this, uh, we will uh, we'll start from this particular uh, uh, slide in the next video, we will explain each one of those a little bit in detail and then we will also look at how to quantify the environmental impact, overall environmental impact when we move from one type of plastic to another type of plastic. So, the whole concept of life cycle analysis that cradle to grave or cradle to cradle concept that we will discuss uh, and that will kind of lead us nicely to the next uh, week, which is on uh, circular economy uh, for plastics. So, uh, so again, uh, uh, I hope that uh, you are enjoying the course so far. This is uh, week 7, uh, fourth video is uh, uh, this is we kind of end of the fourth video. There is one more video in this week which will uh, have it right after this. And uh, again, uh, if you have any questions, put it on the discussion forum, we will be very happy to answer any question that you have. And uh, at, at the same time, uh, uh, if you find some new information, if you find some uh, interesting information regarding plastic waste management, plastics in general, which you think is relevant for this course, put it in the discussion forum, which will help us enrich us, all of us, including uh, our team, the instruction team. Uh, as, as I said several times in this course so far, there is no a standard textbook on plastic waste management yet. So, more information presented here is essentially collation from different sources. So, that is why we have given you a lot of reading materials as well every week. So, look at that 
and uh, do your uh, quiz uh, carefully, nicely and all the best and see you again in the next video.